Okay, I got one for you. <laughs> Stat of the day, right? How surprised are you that Jake Waters on Saturday became the first Big 12 quarterback to throw for 200 and rush for 100 in the same game since Robert Griffin III and Colin Klein did so November 12, 2011? Not very. That, why would that not surprise you? Well, I think he's a good player, and I think he has the ability to, to do those things. It's what he does. You study all the Big 12 teams every year. In your estimation, why had it been 305 games since a Big 12 quarterback had thrown for 200 and rushed for 100 in, in the same game? Beats me. Is there, I mean, do you, have you noticed a, a trend? I mean, it used to be, you know, back in the days with, with Michael and. Uh, well, I think with our quarterbacks, I don't think everybody has been as heavily invested in, you know, the dual use, so to speak, of quarterbacks as, uh, you know, it, it varies from year to year. And, you know, some do and some don't. But I think more are probably less less interested in, in having that quarterback have that kind of balance in his attack. One has been, is there a video game? I kind of <laughs> like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, a year ago, people talked about Jake being the passer and Daniel being the runner. What, what do you think Jake showed in his ca capacity to do both so efficiently in that game? Well, I, you know, I don't think we ever felt that he that he couldn't run the ball. I mean, that's never been on our uh, on our plate. We always felt that he could. Uh, so I, you know, I, I mean, I've known all along. I think all of us here have known uh, in our program have known that he has the capacity to do both. So, you know, it wasn't a surprise to us. I, and it surprises me that it's a surprise to anybody else, really. Good stat. Thank you. Uh, Coach, kind of along those same lines, I think Jake has 37 carries so far. I mean, how much concern is there just with the, the physical toll that that can take on him? Well, you know, you, you have concern about every youngster that, you know, that plays the game. And, uh, you know, if you're, if you're quarterback, you're going to get hit. I mean, whether you're running the ball or whether you're throwing it, I mean, you know, in, in either case, they, you know, scrambles, etc. And and Jake's been, you know, a durable young guy. Uh, but it, you know, I mean, how much I don't know on a scale of one to ten. I don't know how much bothers me. But uh, but it, you know, you have a great deal of concern about it. But you have a great deal of concern about, you know, your running back and your offensive lineman. And I mean, there's all kinds of guys that get get banged up in the course of the ball game. It's a it's, as they say, a physical <coughs> physical game uh, at, at every position, really. After the game, being upset about the quarterback scrambles hurting you again, is it the same kind of breakdowns after looking at it again as what happened against Stephen F. Austin? Well, uh, yes, uh, similar, but uh, not as prolific, probably. You know, as much as just that. You know, when uh, that, that one of them got out against us, it was a, a major play in the in the ball game. I think that kind of uh, elevated my concern. Bill, there's a play that both you and Auburn run quite a bit. They call it the uh, the pop pass or the the option pass, where the quarterback can run a little bit and then choose to throw it. Uh, just from your perspective, uh, what is it you like so much about that play, and what what turned you on to that? Well, I uh, I can't tell you that I always like it. You know, sometimes we don't do it very well, and I don't like it. So it it. It's like any other scheme that you might have. It's uh, you like it if, if you know it, it, the end results are good. Uh, you know, it's just something we've been invested in for an awful long period of time. There's a lot of different ways to do it. So, uh, but it's you know it's just been part of our offense. Coach, back to Jake for a moment and, and the, the ground game. Where have you seen him? make the biggest strides as a running quarterback and are there some certain aspects that Colin 
has really helped him understand whether it's you know on the field or, or watching tape things that he's picked up on well I you know again I go back to what was said a moment ago Matt I uh, uh, I mean apparently everybody sees that as out of the norm and and I don't see that out as an out of the norm you know I mean that's uh, that's what our quarterback does and uh, and he's you know, I don't think there's ever been any doubt in Coach Miller's mind or mine uh, or anybody else uh, that, you know, that's, I mean, it's just what he does. And uh, and he did, I mean, it's not like he didn't run the ball last year. Yeah, I mean, you had Daniel, and Daniel came in and, uh, you know, ran the ball as well. But, you know, but Jake ran the ball, you know, also. So, I mean, it's just not, it's not out of the norm, you know, for us. At least I didn't view it that way. He got, it seemed like last year in the back half of the season is where Jake really took strides and ran the football better as he became more comfortable. But were there things here in the off season that you thought, now he's just going to be that much better of a running quarterback when he's asked to do so? Well, uh, no. Uh, I, I thought he would be better at everything that he does, you know, not just running the ball. Uh, because he's, you know, as he said so many times, we've discussed this in here, that he feels more comfortable in the offense, has a better understanding of the offense, has a better understanding of when to, when not to do anything and everything, you know. So it's, it's just familiarity uh, to create a, a more consistent performance level for him. Uh, but, you know, again, it's... Uh, as you would expect of any player in your program to get better, you know, with time as you have the opportunity to play more and get more repetition in practice, et cetera. So, uh, yeah, I, that's what he does. Yeah. Coach, you commented yesterday briefly on the teleconference about the, the replay situation at Iowa State, but can you comment in general about the, the – format they have for replay and the thought that every play is reviewed when in this day of sped up offenses that's not even close to possible well it, it is hard and I don't know all the dynamics of it I know they work diligently to you know try to put the pieces together to stay up with the game it's kind of like you know just officiating in general I mean they've they've altered things in order to stay up with the speed of the game which uh you know, I mean, it is what it is, so to say, so to speak. But uh, you know, I, I I think they make that effort up there. How how difficult it is, I I don't really know. I'm not sitting up there pushing the buttons and uh, making those decisions, so I really couldn't couldn't comment on it. But uh, it you know obviously causes some issues, problems. What are your thoughts? changing the system to be more like the NFL. They re review touchdowns, turnovers, and then it's up to the coaches to make an appeal instead of... Well, we still have the opportunity to appeal things, but, you know, as uh, an official would indicate to you, uh, you know, the, they will, you know, and th they're going to review virtually everything that, uh, that they possibly can. And more often than not, the decision's already been made. So if you make the appeal, it's just going to cost you a timeout. And, uh, so you don't see, because of that, you don't see it very often anyway. Uh, you know, as far as going to the, you know, to the NFL routine, uh, you know, I, I can understand that. I, I can see why. I mean, uh, you look at games right now, we're... You know, our games are, I think we probably have averaged three hours and 20 minutes or so, a little above that, and I think that's probably normal. Uh, and, you know, you, you remember there was that, uh, that major push to uh, reduce the time frame. You remember that, Pitt. And it, 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 about the same time they wanted to cut down the length of, of ball games, uh, they initiated the TV policy, which allows you to have, you know, 8,000 minutes of TV time, uh, which, you know, I think has a, even with the, the uh, hurry up offenses that uh, everybody has right now, uh, those games are still, you know, lengthy. You know, they just take a timeout and a two and a half minute timeout and you sit around and twiddle your thumbs for that period of time. And 
clock keeps running. So that didn't answer your question, but nevertheless, it was. Well, on a different topic, you had some late junior college guys come in. Uh, have they all made it through the clearinghouse? And if, mm -hmm. if so, what's keeping them off the field? I know some of them didn't even travel to Ames. Uh, yes, they've all made it through the clearinghouse. The, uh, you know, the only, uh, the only issue is just, you know, coming in so late, uh, being able to get a system in place and catch up with things, and, uh, and they haven't gotten there yet. You know, that's, that's that simple. I think all of them, I don't think there's any of them that uh, have demonstrated that they can't play here. You know, I think that's, that's not the issue. It's just being able to uh, learn the system, uh, quite simply put. Coach, on the running backs, I'm curious as to two games in, what your thoughts are on what Charles Jones and DeMarcus have, have done, what you're, what you're thinking? Well, I think they've, they've both played well in, in both ball games, have not had any uh, you know, issues with either one of them. I, uh, I, and I don't think this ball game was any different. Charles got uh, more opportunities than uh, DeMarcus did, uh, but both of them, you know, played about the same uh, as they had before. Uh, both of them are uh, becoming better and better and better in all facets of the game, as I've said so many times. You know, it's, it's evident they can run the ball fine. and. Uh, they involve themselves in the passing game. They're catching the ball uh, well, and uh, their pass protection has been uh, improved over the course of the two games. So pretty much the same. Uh, Coach, you mentioned Saturday that you were uh, pleasantly surprised to at least win a game when making so many mistakes on the field. I know it's it's uh, there were there was a lot a lot to fix there, but uh, how has that perspective developed since that post game press conference of now having an opportunity to see the game film? Well, uh, the game didn't change. You know, it's still you know I, I saw what I saw and uh, it didn't uh, change a great deal. I mean, certain certain things that I didn't see during the course of the game that you see on videotape uh, still. Uh, you know, I don't know how pleasantly surprised I was, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I think it does, on, on the positive side of it, it does, and I think I probably addressed that, that it, uh, that it does have a meaningful uh, impact on the quality of the character of the young people in our program. I mean, to, uh, you know, to come back and, and win the ball game, to stay in the ball game, uh, to overcome some of the uh, issues and situations that occurred during the course of the ball game. Uh, I, I thought, you know, took a great deal of character. It's, you know, people talk about, you know, the real significant thing in life is how we respond to things, and I thought they responded quite well. Uh, and I was I was pleased about that. I was pleased that they didn't give in. As I visited with him yesterday, I you know I just alluded to, you know, take out your 16 goals card and look at that. And there's probably not one on there that didn't uh, have some application to the outcome of that ball game. And uh, and that's probably a reasonably true statement as well. So so I was uh, it was it was a character assessment that I thought was. Uh, very positive from, from our young guys. Okay. Uh, going back to the running game a little bit, do you like the patience that both Jake and the running backs are showing as far as letting the block set up and, and, and following the leads there? Or they I, uh, good point, yes, I, I do, simple answer. Uh, I think they have been, uh, you know, patient. And I think there's times when uh, patients might get you in trouble. Not very often, but sometimes it does. But they have, you know, they, they pick and choose quite well, I think, uh, up to this point in time for being, quote, unquote, young in our program anyway, young backs, uh, you know, Charles is young by age and DMAC by experience. So, you know, I think they've, they've been able to pick up the, you know, the capacity to pick and choose, uh, you know, how and when. Uh, quite well, so. It seems especially vital for Charles and the Wildcat. I mean, this, he really seems patient. He's a lot like Colin did. Yeah. So well, you kind of have to, you know, if it's not there, you kind of have to wait for it to happen and hope it does, you know. that's uh, So that's, and that's not an easy choice to make. It's not a matter of just standing back there and 
letting something happen. It's, you know, you've got to have some movement that goes along with it, but, uh, you know, you implement that patience and, you know, the speed of your approach to the line of scrimmage, simply put, probably. Is there anything specific you drill into your team uh, the week <coughs> after they commit, uh, maybe more penalties than you would hope out of them? Well, I, you know, we go back and, uh, and try to break down, you know, what the penalties were and why they occurred. And then, like anything else, it's like uh, poor technique, uh, missed assignments. You know, most of it is it's easily uh, identified, and, and maybe sometimes that's not the issue. But more often than not, you're talking about focus and, and the discipline it takes to stay focused on certain things that you have to do. Uh, you know, illegal procedures, we get, uh, you know, uh, three in the offensive line, we get two with our wide receivers, you know, that's just a matter of discipline and being able to stay focused on the task at hand. And, and the other penalties probably could fall in that category as well, you know, with three defensive penalties that uh, uh, shouldn't exist. And sometimes defensively, you get, and, and offensively, you get yourself out of position and then you don't have the discipline to, uh, you know, to react to being out of position and, uh, you know, you, you reach out on defense and, uh, you know, hold, uh, you uh, grab a face mask or because you're out of position, uh, uh, you, you get a pass interference call because you were late reacting to something that took place. That was a matter of uh, focus and where your eyes were, and, uh, you know, and you get the, on the two-point conversion, you know, when Glenn gets uh, the holding call, I mean, he, you know, he, he, he made a reaction, you know, and that, again, that to me, that's focus and discipline, you know, he made a reaction that uh, wasn't well thought out, and consequently, you know, it was a very visible penalty, you know, he's, he's out there, it's just he and the other guys, so. Uh, you, you have to have the discipline that says, okay, I, I may have made a mistake, but I can't compound it, you know, by creating a penalty. So that's, that, and that's what we address. Okay. Uh, okay. I also want to know, what do you expect to be the uh, greatest challenge that Auburn will pose to you on, on offense? On their offense or ours? Yeah, their, Auburn's offense. Well, I mean, take your pick. I mean, they've, uh, they've got... Uh, uh, they're, they're a physical offensive line. They're a, uh, uh, they've got speed in the backfield, uh, running back positions and quarterback position, and, uh, and they run the ball well, and they're deceptive in the way they run the ball. Uh, and the, I mean, the ball carriers are deceptive. They can make you miss. Uh, wide receivers that are, that are uh, big, fast, physical. Uh, I don't think I left out of position, did I? They're, I mean, in other words, they're very, very talented players, and they have a, an offense that is uh, uh, very diversified. You know, there's people talk about them being, you know, just a zone team, and uh, you know, where you hand the ball off or you take it to him and keep it, and everybody, you know, blocks left or blocks right. And they're far more complex than that. I mean, there's a there's a lot of offense there that. Uh, you know, maybe doesn't get addressed, but they have, uh, and, and they utilize a lot of different formations, and they can create a variety of different unbalanced formations. They utilize a lot of motion, uh, and, and they go and they go fast. I mean, they're one of those really upbeat, up-tempo teams. Uh, probably 20, 25 percent of the time, they're going, you know, faster than light. I mean, they're just at the line of scrimmage going right now, uh, and they have a number of different tempos that they can that they can run, so you have to be careful in your hustle bustle to get lined up that uh, that they don't, you know, freeze the snap count and get you to jump off sides. Uh, so it, it's a complex preparation against really quality players. Uh, I know you you said you prefer not to play a conference game this early, but looking back now with the quality of opponent you have coming up and the extra time was was Iowa State maybe a a good gauge for what, maybe e even to expose some things and what you need to work on, and you feel better about about that now, I guess, than you 
you might have at the start of the season? Well, I, considering the fact we won the ball game, I feel better, but I haven't changed my mind about, you know, having, you know, when you, when you play those ball games. And, you know, we're looking at, uh, you know, at playing some very, you know, playing a, a tremendous team in, uh, in Auburn. And we've got uh, a lot of young guys that, uh, that really got uh, little or no playing time in, you know, in our second ball game because of the tightness of the ball game. So, you know, that's a, that's a disadvantage part of it. There, now, there are some advantages that came from it. You mentioned those, but, you know, again, by and large, I would like to have the opportunity to get, you know, younger players or, you know, second level players more opportunities early in the season before you start the conference play. I think on the at right guard, you had uh, Luke Hayes started this last game that both of them uh, played. Is that probably your most competitive position on the offensive line? Mm, probably well. right now. That would be accurate statement. Coach, your uh, nine days out today, yesterday was, was, was 10. When you uh, spoke to the team yesterday, um, you talk talk at all about this opportunity at hand against a top 10 Auburn team, kind of a game that a lot of people had talked about during the off season and pushed off and uh, pushed away, and now it's kind of here. Well, I mean, it'll be here in a heartbeat. Uh, there's no doubt about that. So you have to be awfully careful about not putting things off. So, you know, it's our intent to, you know, treat this week as, uh, you know, like it's like it's game week as much as possible. Uh, but, you know, as far as, you know, what I share with our players, uh, my, my interest right now is, uh, is correcting mistakes and making improvement uh, by each individual in the, in the program. And, and that's, uh, you know, that's exactly what I've uh, addressed with them. Uh, you know, I think the rest of it will be parceled out over a period of uh, a period of time, but you know it is a tremendous opportunity for them. And uh, but at, at the end of the day, you know the opportunity is uh, immaterial if we don't correct mistakes and if we don't, you know, work to get ourselves a great deal better. How about how about you? I'm thinking back to Nebraska '98 and Nebraska '2000, and USC was here, but. This will be the first time, Coach, that you've faced a top 10 non-conference team uh, here in your stadium. What's that feeling like for you? I, you know, I haven't thought about it that way. I mean, I, I just, I, I see them as a very, very talented football team, and it's the next one on the schedule. And, and I don't, I just haven't looked at anything beyond that. Uh, be a waste of time, probably. Coach, when you when you have a an offense, maybe Auburn or anyone in the Big Twelve in general that, <coughs> excuse me, that does something so well, whether it's run or pass, is it easier to maybe prepare for something to take that away, or maybe force them to you know do other things like throw the ball if they're a good running team, or is it easier to maybe try and make them and force them to run the ball if they're if they're good at that well I, you know i'm not going to tell you what our what our plans are but uh you know a team like auburn is is a balanced football team i mean they can run it they can throw it and you know the word has always has been for some time uh you know uh nick marshall uh can really run the ball but you know doesn't throw the ball uh you need to watch the same tape i watch i mean he can, he can throw the ball he can get it you know, he can get it there and he can get it there in a hurry. Uh, I mean, he's just, uh, you know, he's a true dual threat guy. So, uh, and they have that kind of balance in their offense. I mean, their, their statistics are heavily in the run game. Uh, but, uh, you know, they, they pull the trigger and throw it. And you look at the number of throws they have. They have a signif significant number of throws. You know, they just, because they run, and they go so fast with their offense and they're so prolific with their offense uh, that, you know, they're going to get uh, in, you know, you look at their season and they average a, an extensive number of snaps during the course of a ball game. So, you know, you're going to get, you know, uh, more yardage. You know, and, with a, you know. and with a guy like Nick Marshall, uh, is it one of those things where you try to 
get pressure on them? I mean, not not going schematically, but like, I mean, how important is it is to get pressure on him and to make sure that he doesn't extend the plays like the other quarterbacks that have seemingly been able to do? Well, I mean, as long as it's discipline pressure, I mean, you always want that. I mean, if, no matter who the quarterback happens to be, uh, you'd like to be able to disrupt the, you know, the quarterback and his, you know, whether it's his rhythm or his throwing motion or his decision making or staying on time with his routes. I mean, all those things are significant to a quarterback. So if you can disrupt those, then, you know, you may have some advantages. But when you've got a guy that can bounce all over the place, you know, you have to make sure that it's a controlled uh, pressure that you place on him uh, if you're capable of doing that. You know, that's uh, not an easy task. I mean, it's easy to say, but it's not always that easy to do. Were you encouraged by the, the latter part in the, in the fourth quarter when your defense was able to kind of collapse the pocket? And does that kind of make some confidence and some headway in, in, in doing such? Well, I, I think there were some, you know, there were, there were some times when, you know, our pass rush was effective. And at the, towards the end of the ball game, the last series, you know, a couple of snaps in there that were very positive in that respect as far as, you know, the, the pass rush itself was concerned. And, uh, you know, that's a positive thing. But, you know, we need to do those kind of things consistently. We need to be uh, consistently good at it. Coach, being in the SEC, Auburn's used to playing in front of 80, 90, 100,000. Uh, you know how this atmosphere here out here is on game day. Do you expect them to be surprised at all by how difficult it is to play here and the atmosphere that it brings on game day? Mm, I, I don't know that they would. Uh, you know, I think they, uh, you know, will do everything they can to prepare for and, and anticipate, uh, you know, that the crowd noise would be significant. and. Uh, you know, I would expect them to be a silent count football team on offense, and they probably will. Yeah.